Welcome back to the Maths Guide. Today we are looking at equations with two unknown variables. So let's jump into it. Okay, but before we start, let's just remind ourselves what an equation is and what the rules are. So an equation is a statement where two expressions have the same value. What do I mean by that? That sounds a bit horrible. Well, this is an expression, and on the other side of my equal sign, this is an expression. And for it to be an equation, these have to be the same value. And sometimes in an equation we can just have numbers, like 2 plus 4 equals 6. This is an equation, but this is a numerical equation. What we're looking at today is an algebraic equation, where we have these algebraic letters, or variables, but it still must be an equal equation. So how do we go about finding the value of these variables in an algebraic equation? Well, we're going to do it by following these steps today. First, we're going to create a table. Then we're going to start with a value for our first variable, and then we're going to use that to find the second variable. Let's see what I mean with question one. So question one says a and b equals 14, and we can sort of think about it like this diagram down here. If we have the total length of 14, then what we're saying is a measures a part of 14, and b measures the other part. But together, they will equal 14. So how can we start to put some values on these variables? Well, we're going to do it by making a table. So let's start with a table with A and with B. If we say that A has a value of 1, what we're saying is that this orange A is only the value of 1. So therefore, to find out what B is, B will be the difference between 14 and 1. So therefore, we can show that by using inverse. So if I put 14 subtract a equals b and then replace a with the value 1, 14 subtract 1 equals 13. So in my table if a was 1, b would have to be 13. Now some of you could probably see that straight away just by looking at 1 and the 14 and realizing the difference must be 13. But it's really important to know how to do it in other ways because sometimes we're going to get numbers that we can't just do in our head. Okay, let's carry on our table, and let's say that we have a as 2. So again, we're going to use the inverse, so 14 subtract a will equal b. And now we can substitute a with our 2, so 14 subtract 2 equals 12. So therefore, b would be 12. And I can do this the other way around as well by starting with b. So let's say I think b is 11, and now I want to find out what a is. I can again use the inverse, but this time I'm going to say 14 subtract b will equal a. And we know the value of b because we've made it up as 11. So 14 subtract 11 equals a. 14 subtract 11 equals 3. So a in this case would be 3. And essentially I could just keep doing this all day. I could find different measurements for a and use it to help me find measurements for b using our equation. But is there a limit? Is there a limit to how many options we would have when trying to find two unknown variables? Well, I might get to 5, and then that would be 9, and then 6 would be 8, and 7 would be 7. And if I wanted to do any more, it would just be 8 and 6, which I've already used. So is this the end of our options for these two variables in this equation? Well, no. Because what if I said that a is a decimal number, and the measurement of a is 2.1? Well, let's use our equation again to work out b. So b equals 14 subtract 2.1. So therefore, b equals 11.9. So this is another set of potential numbers that could be replaced into our variables. And if we think about it with decimals, I could put A as being 2.1, but I could also put it as 2.11, or 2.112, or 2.1123, and I could go on forever. So we say, as mathematicians, that there are infinite, unlimited amounts of possibilities for an equation with two unknown variables, unless we're given some rules to play with. Because imagine if we were looking at this equation here, but they told us that we have to use whole numbers. Well, in that case, these would be our only solutions. 
Okay, let's mix things up. Let's have a look at this one here. Now, this is exactly the same principle. This is an equation where this side of our equation must be equal to this side. We're again going to start to use a table. But first of all, let's just think about what this means. If we have two variables next to each other without any operation sign between them, what it's actually saying is that we're using multiplication. So this would actually be a times b. It's like a little algebra trick. We don't need to show multiplication. We can just put our variables next to each other. So this equation basically says a times b equals 6. So again, let's build our table. Let's have a and b. And let's look at step two. We're going to start by creating a value for a or b, but we'll do a. So in this case, let's start with a being 1. And again, we can use our inverse to help us here. So a times b equals 6. So therefore, b must equal 6 divided by a, because division is the opposite of multiplication. 6 divided by a would be 6 divided by 1, and therefore b equals 6. And that looks right, doesn't it? Because 1 times 6 does equal 6. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's use 2 for our variable of a this time. And again, we're going to use our inverse to help us. So if a times b equals 6, b on its own must be b equals 6 divided by a, and b equals 6 divided by 2. So therefore, b equals 3. Let's just check that. 2 times 3, and 2 times 3 does equal 6. And again, we could get into some decimal numbers here and start multiplying decimals. We're not going to in this video, but essentially understand that there are still infinite possibilities for these variables. Okay, our last one. This looks a lot trickier, doesn't it? Now, it says 2x plus y equals 18. And what it's saying this time is that we have 2x that are going to have the same value. So no matter what we do here, we've got to remember that the x's share the same value. And then we have plus a y. Okay, so how are we going to find out the value of this x or y, or potential values of these x or y's? Well, again, let's start with a table. Step one, I'm going to have my x over here and my y over here. Now, just incidentally, the x and the y, they could well be a and b, m and n. Any letter combination doesn't matter. So here we go. Let's start again with a logical start, and let's have x as being 1. And what we're doing to our diagram down here is we're saying this is 1 and this is 1, but this y is still unknown. So again, now let's start to think about the inverse, and let's put y on its own. So y would therefore equal 18 minus 2x. Well, we know the value of x because we gave it the value, we've given it the value 1. So we can do the next line, y equals 18 minus 2 times 1. And now I must use my bod mass knowledge to help me with the order I need to solve this in. And my bod mass declares that I have to start with my multiplication. So therefore, y equals 18 minus 2. And therefore, y equals 16. So if x is 1, y would need to be 16. Let's check that by replacing this question mark with our 16 and add them all together and make sure we get 18. 1 and 1 is 2, plus 16 is 18. Correct. Okay, let's do another one, and let's go out of sequence a little bit. Let's say that we're going to say that x has a value of 3. What is y? So we're saying that this x is 3, this x is 3, but we don't know y. We want to get y on its own, so we're going to put y at the start, and y equals the inverse of the operation at the moment, which is addition, so it's going to be subtraction now. So y equals 18 subtract 2x. Well, in this case, x has a value of 3, so it's y equals 18 minus 2 times 3. Bod mass tells me to do my multiplication first, so y equals 18 minus 2 times 3 is 6, so minus 6. y equals 12. Let's check it by replacing the question mark with a 12 and then adding them together. 3 plus 3 is 6, plus 12 equals 18. Got it right again. And again, for this example, there would be infinite possibilities that could be used as variables. So there you go. That is how to find the value of variables when we have two unknown variables in an equation. Let's look at things to remember. First, we're going to create a table to help identify our options. 
Then we're gonna start by creating a value for one of our terms. And we must remember that there are infinite number of opportunities and options that we can use, unless we are given a rule, like it must be a whole number, or it must be a number greater than 10, etc., etc. Okay, your turn. Here are three questions for you to have a little look at. I would like one example of what our variables could be for each of these equations. Put your answers in the comment section, I'm gonna look at them all. And there you go. Hopefully this lesson was useful. If it was, subscribe to the channel, but for now, I'm gonna see you in another video. Peace out.